everyone knows Cambridge is an exciting city, especially with so many people coming and going all the time. Every fall sees a new batch of students and visiting scholars arrive, and every day it seems like more tech professionals pour into the offices in Kendall Square and elsewhere. And all of Greater Boston flocks to Cambridge's culture touchstones, from theaters to libraries to museums to festivals. But there are others arriving all the time too. Cambridge is the adopted home of many immigrants arriving here to hopefully stay. They come from an astonishing range of places around the globe, and they all share a thirst to fit into their adopted community. Many of them also share at least an initial disconnect, where roadblocks like language fluency and literacy are an immediate challenge. Audible has collaborated with the Loop Lab on a series of pieces that explore English language fluency and literacy within the port neighborhood of Cambridge. Steve, a designer at Audible, a tech company in Kendall Square, first spoke with Bayana. An ESOL teacher or English to speakers of other languages. What are the students like that that、um, that go there, and where are they coming from? How old are they? What's the age range? What's their background? What are they shooting for in their lives? Okay,、uh, the student population at the, the community learning center is very diverse,、um, even by age. I mean, we have people. We have nineteen-year-old. Students as we have eighty-year-old students, so it it runs the gamut as far as age goes.、Um, it's also very diverse as far as、uh, the countries that students are from. The larger populations that we serve are、uh, Haitian, Ethiopian, Eritrean,、uh, Salvadoran, Dominican Republic,、uh, Bangladesh students from Bangladesh, Nepal. Those are some of the larger groups that we see coming through the. Through our doors. Wow! And、uh, where do they live? Do you know?、Uh, most of our well, for the ESOL learning program,、mm-hmm. you have to live in Cambridge. So most of our students are Cambridge residents.、Um, I think I know the answer to this, but、uh, do you like your job? I love my job. Yeah, I love Wh- my job. What are the best parts of your job? I think the best parts of my job are helping people to、um, to be successful, to meet their goals, and, and to to reach for. Uh, and you know, to be、uh, you know inspired to reach for more and for a better way of life. I love the diversity of experience that I have with so many different cultures and backgrounds and walks of life of my students,、uh, and you know, just seeing them you know make small mi- milestones and make small steps towards progress so that they can、uh, improve their lives and you know go on to do bigger and better things once they've gone through the the program. So that's you know just the the population that working with immigrants for me is is very rewarding. Okay,、um, without you know necessarily using names, but can you talk about any specific students that you've worked with you know in the past couple of years? A young woman who started、um, ESOL classes. I think she started at about an intermediate level ESOL class, and it took her several years to get through the program.、Um, after she graduated from the, pro- the ESOL program. She decided to participate、uh, in the certified nursing assistant training program.、Uh, what I didn't know at the time was that she had been experiencing housing instability, and she had found herself in, in a domestic violence situation as well. So she ended up、uh, being、um, homeless for a period of time. And when she came to me to be involved in the certified nursing assistant training program, she was in a transitional housing program in the city of Cambridge that supports. Uh, women who've experienced domestic violence. So, but you know, she worked really hard.、Uh, she, you know, we tried to support her the best way we could, and she was one of our star students. At towards, you know, as looking back, she was a great student. She was very motivated. She had a dream of becoming a nurse.、Um, she had some experience in her、uh, background around、um, helping and caring for elderly people. And so, after she finished our program, she passed the state exam. Um, she found stable housing throughout that process,、mm-hmm. and she、um, she pursued a, a, de- a community college education to become、um, a nurse. 
So now she's enrolled in college. Uh, she has a job as a certified nursing assistant. And she said that it really, you know, the program changed her life um, because it, you know, it gave her a purpose um, and a goal and a steady job and steady pay. And it just made her feel so much better about herself and her accomplishments and what she was able to do. So that, that was a very rewarding experience for me to see her go through all of that and to come out, um, you know, with a certification and with a, with a job and, um, like she said, with a sense of purpose for her life. And how old did you say she was when she started in the program? Well, she's, she's in her, she's, uh, in, she's 30 now, so I would say in her 20s. Um, what do you think it is about Cambridge that attracts such, so many and so many, for, from so many different places in, in the world that, um, you know, if they're, if they're going to end up in the Northeast, that they end up in, in Cambridge? Yeah. Uh, I think that Cambridge is a very welcoming uh, presence for people who are coming, you know, from other countries uh, and starting their lives here. I mean, it's a sanctuary city. So what that, does that mean? A sanctuary city meaning that, um, you know, they not only they welcome immigrants, whether you're of legal status or not of legal status, that is not of consequence in this city that you're welcome and we and that the the city opens their arms to 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 people who um you know who are seeking a better life and it doesn't matter what your legal status is it's not something that is going to be a deterrent um from making you know making a successful mm -hmm. way in your life so you know and and then, I mean there's the policy the policy is that you know, it's not it's not of consequence that if you're if you're legal or illegal. So some of our students are asylees and asylee seekers. Some of our students are undocumented, um, and we don't ask of, about their, their status. It's mm -hmm. not it's not you know of consequence to us. You know, we're just here to support you know their learning goals and their personal goals um, and to help them to you know be productive members of uh, the city. Next, Bart. A programmer from Audible spoke with a Catab region named Ralph, who is an ESOL teacher originally from Haiti. What's your name? My name is Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I'm Bart. Nice to meet you, Bart. In Creole, it was hard enough as it was. Uh -huh. So when I was learning English, you know, kids are kids. You know, um, when you can't speak the language and somebody wants to blame someone, they're going to point the finger at you. So when the finger was pointed in my direction, huh. things got really bad because um, I could not defend myself. I could not say, you know, it was not me. This person is lying or whatever. And when, you're, you're stuttering was kicking in. Yeah, because yeah. you know, the more nervous you you got, the the worse things got. And I remember the worst part is when. Well, it was when I uh, was trying to say, um, not me. I remember those two words, like, not me. Those two words I just knew, right? <laughs> but I could not say them because I was just so nervous and so scared. Um, I guess in the end it didn't matter because I still got in trouble, <laughs> you know? So. And how did you work through that? Um... I didn't get a hold of that until I was maybe in second grade, uh -huh. where I started to notice when I was going to start stuttering. So I learned to kind of like think ahead of myself. Um, even right now yep. I'm doing it where I'm about to say a word and I notice that I'm about to stutter, I just switch the word. It's not, <laughs> it's just not worth it. Yep, yep. So. Interesting. I also work with people um, from all sorts of backgrounds um, who, you know, speak Spanish and only Spanish and mm -hmm. have to find a way to communicate with them. Uh, people from all over the world. So, uh, and I do that, you know, vol voluntarily. Um, but knowing that they're struggling uh, to communicate, I've been there. How could tech companies uh, contribute to this? Sponsoring organizations that's helping uh, people who aren't advantaged uh -huh. enough 
to have access to certain things. So let's say I'm a local library, right? Um, so this company would uh, kind of help this group that's in the library yeah. uh, deliver this goal, right? So if it's to teach English, um, it's to teach English. Right now it's mostly coding, but I don't think mm -hmm. it should end there. I think it should, you know, um, be finance, especially finance. Yeah. Um, I think it should be stuff like, um, you know, communicate, uh, com uh, communication, uh, marketing and uh -huh. whatnot, especially self-marketing, you know. Um, but right now, most companies um, are helping with the whole coding thing. I think that's a start, but I really don't think it should end there. I, I've, I've been on like the worst end of the stick. You, you can't get any worse than not being able to speak, right? right. <laughs> you, you, you just can't, right? Yeah. So. Uh, I've been there, so I'm a bit more patient than others when it yeah. comes to that. When they're trying to communicate something, I may not understand what they're saying, but I might understand, you know, what they're looking at, what they're pointing at, try to connect the dots from yeah. there. So you're uh, talking to people who speak Spanish, but you don't speak Spanish. Exactly. And, I and just so you're doing it with gestures? <laughs> yes, and, and reverse engineering, <laughs> really. It's I thought you were going to say, uh, you know, you had some translator come in or something. Nah, uh, I, I find that the whole translator thing, although it's, it's easy, it ruins connection. You know, you can't really communicate without that. Um, it's easy, it's, it saves time, I get it. If you're in a rush, sure. But when I'm working with someone, usually I'm not in a rush. Usually I'm just trying to understand you, I'm trying to get you to understand me. And I'm simply trying to make sure that we have a, uh, um, an equal uh, playing field, a mm -hmm. very leveled playing field, so that we can get what we need to get done. Yeah, so, yep. And we would come in the next day, we would go through the writing, and then uh, I would see like a chunk of things explaining some personal things, right? And then we would just dive into it even deeper. And uh, we would have um, like, let's say a paragraph, a messy, messy paragraph. We would split it in like two or three, right? And then each of those paragraphs would now be uh, about something slightly different, but all of them are connected, way more organized, gets the point across, it teaches him how to write, it teaches him how to you know, manage his ideas, it teaches him how to express himself. And then now the focus became less about you know, this particular book and mm -hmm. more about, okay, um, how can you and I connect on this? Right on this document right here, right. And at the end of the day, when you know uh, he would say something like, "Every teacher tried to teach me this. Um, I just never understood it until now." That really, really, really made up my day. Like it just really made my day. We at Audible have been happy to learn some of the ways we could contribute to the immigrant community here. We assume that everyone these days have access to a computer and the internet, but that's not necessarily so. And it's clear that every new way to connect helps. Likewise, we have been looking at opportunities to teach software coding to the local community, but we didn't appreciate the thirst of non-coding introductions to the internet and the wealth of resources that can be found here in Cambridge and beyond. We learned a lot by listening, even when we thought we might not be able to speak the language. 